Hey, buddy. How are you? How was school today? School was great. Yeah, good. Hey, I just walked in through the door and talked real briefly with mom. And mom said something that you and her had some type of interesting conversation when you arrived from school. Everything okay in school? Everything's fine at school, Dad. Um, I was mentioning to mom the interesting day I had at school today. During history class, my teacher talked about the numerous wars that happened worldwide and how so many people, um, how so many people are losing their lives. And one thing that caught my attention was when he talked about Hiroshima, how the, the US dropped an atomic bomb there and the amount of lives that perished. Then the after effects. Um, then he went on to mention a few others. So I was asking mom if those citizens will be back to normal in the future. That's an interesting question. You know, it's a, when I, I remember when I was in school, Caleb, and we were talking about that during the history. It, it, I remember very well as if it was yesterday, the images they showed and how all those kids and adults, they were all dead. And, and believe it or not, I think that, I don't know if your teacher mentioned this, but the majority of the people died uh, mostly because of the after effects, right? The, uh, nuclear and the after effects. But it's interesting you mentioned that, Caleb. And, and you know, if you think about it and we think what the Bible teaches us, um, that city was destroyed. I mean, if you dig deep into it, and maybe the teacher will talk a little bit more about it, um, it was inhabitable. People couldn't live there because of the, uh, the radiation and so much things happening there. But think about the future. You mentioned if it'll be the same. So if I were to ask you, without putting the Bible in front of us or anything, do you think things will be back to normal there or anywhere else where there's been war and casualties? Well, yes. Yes, right? And it's interesting that when we read the Bible, Caleb, there's so many promises the Bible teaches us. Let me put it to you this way. I'll ask you a question. If you were to tell me three of the top things you're looking forward to the most in the future, let's say in paradise, what would you say those three things are? Well, um... I would hope not to see no more death and um, to be able to play with all sorts of animals. And my favorite one is getting along, seeing how everyone's going to get along with so many people. Unity, right? And those three things, it's, it's interesting you mentioned them, and those three things are mentioned in the Bible. Let's go one at a time, right? You mentioned something about the death. Let's open our Bibles and let's read together what the Bible teaches us Let's say, why don't we use the scripture, Revelation 21 4? How's that? Why don't you read it for us? Revelation 21 4. And he will wipe out every tear from their eyes, and death will be no more. Neither will mourning, mourning nor outcry, nor pain be any more. The former things have passed away. So if you were to take that scripture and put it, let's say, into small little words, What's going to happen in the near future? That there will be no pain suffering. Or death. It's coming. So pretty much how all these people are dying in wars and so forth, in the very near future, how beautiful it is that you and I, with our family, will be able to live forever, right? Now, you mentioned something, and I mentioned, that, uh, too, what happened in Hiroshima. And it's happening in all parts of the world, how they're constantly bombarding the earth, polluting the earth. But notice what Jehovah promised to us with regards to this same planet you and I and our family members are living in. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 4. And read that scripture for us right there. A generation... Ecclesiastes 1, 4. You got it? Okay. A generation is going and a generation is coming, but the earth remains forever. So you think the earth will perish? What's going to happen? to the earth. It will remain forever. forever. So whatever happened then, Jehovah will restore it. So I know you mentioned something about the animals, and you know what? Guess what, buddy? I'm looking for the day I can just leave the windows open. You and I can hear a waterfall, maybe. Maybe see Angel just coming with his famous lion he wants to be on and cuddling it with, with this lion. Maybe one day we're looking for Caitlin and we look in the waters and there she is with her dolphin. And you said, what's your favorite animal? 
inside the tiger. Imagine you sticking your hand inside that tiger's mouth. All this, the Bible promises that this will happen in the very near future. So how about this? How about you use all this information and you share with your classmates tomorrow? Well, good thing you said that because tomorrow there, we're going to do a report and talk in front of the class. So maybe that will work. Beautiful. So I look forward to, for you to do that tomorrow, right? So to appreciate that and find assignment there, we wouldn't, wouldn't expect anything less from our former school over school over still wouldn't. <laughs> Very fine job. Um, Brother Edgar Barrier, um, point of counsel was study number 44, effective use of questions. I'm sure you would agree with me when I say he was very effective in the use of questions. But the reading book makes this point. It says use questions in a way that will achieve a desired result. It says your aim may be to get an oral response. It may be to stimulate a mental uh, response. It is what you ask and how you ask it have a direct bearing on your success in the use of questions. Now, if you notice on page uh, 236, if you have your books, why is this important? You can see where um, Brother Edgar Breer uh, applied this, this uh, speech quality. It says questions that are effective help listeners to get involved. And didn't he get uh, young brother that's very involved? And it says answers to well-chosen questions may also provide valuable feedback for the teacher. So to say that brother, that's a very fine job. And we certainly appreciate um, this new arrangement